Okay, the next step is to polar align the uh, telescope. You do that by removing the polar alignment caps. Now this SXW doesn't come with a polar alignment scope, although the SXD comes with it standard. It's an upgrade uh, on the Sphinx. It's an additional option. And I would recommend it if you're going to do photography or you need really precise tracking. You can get away without it. Um, you can look through the tube and see the North Star. That's good enough to get a good alignment um, and have good go-to. But again, if you want to do photography or something that involves accurate tracking, uh, go ahead and get the polar alignment scope. Now, the polar alignment scope is only visible when the mount is turned to its side. And you have to do that electronically on this particular mount. All right, once you've selected your time and your location, go to the top and press OK. All right, it'll give you a warning that says, don't look at the sun. Don't look at the sun. Uh, this is like a giant magnifying glass. It will burn your eye or anything else behind here. So click confirm because you're not going to do that. Now, it'll come up. The next screen says, point telescope towards right horizon. That's quite confusing. Uh, I choose to call it the west horizon because you've placed the scope facing north. Um, they consider that the right horizon. I just pointed to the west horizon. And you'll see these black marks on the scope. What you want to do is move the scope until these, align, these marks align here and here. There we go. OK. So once you've done that, then just click OK. It'll say enter scope mode. Say yes. All right, now it'll come up with the image of the sky. And if you place the right time and date, it should be pointed fairly accurately as to what's really in the sky. Now, it won't be dead on accurate because there's always discrepancies. You know, did you perfectly level the mount? Did you get it perfectly polar aligned? Or do you have the exact coordinates in? There's, there's just so many variables, it's never going to be right on to start with. So that's what we do. That's what alignment is for, is to correct for those errors. So the first thing we do, go to chart mode. There's this icon right here. So we click chart. Now it, the screen will turn blue. What we want to do is hit object which is on the far left side. And it'll give you a list of Messier object, NGC, sun, moon, planet, star. So we want to go select a star. Uh, we're going to pick Vega, just because that's a convenient one that most people know. So I will scroll down to Vega, and I hit select. And it'll show Vega, star, and the magnitude. So say yes, OK. Now, hit go to, which is on the lower right. And the mount should slew right to it. This may take a minute or so to do. You'll notice that there's a keys all across the bottom for stop. If you get cords being wrapped or it's going to hit something or something's wrong, just hit any, any button to stop the telescope. Okay. Also, when you've done this, you'll hear the, the motors engage, which is just the RA tracking motor that will track the Earth's rotation. It gives better alignment if the mount's actually tracking the entire time. So when you put something in the field of view, it will stay there now. But uh, what we want to do at this point is align the telescope to actually point at Vega. So at this point, we'll go over to the eyepiece. Let's uh, look through here. And if it's not in the eyepiece, uh, center it in the finder scope, which the finder scope uh, should be aligned to the telescope. We can uh, go over that later or in a separate video. Um, but assuming it is, center it in the finder scope. It should be centered in the eyepiece. Uh, to center it, if it's off, you can push the right ascension declination buttons here uh, to move the telescope, like so. Now see, when I'm pushing it now, it's moving very fast. So I want to zoom in to make uh, slight movements so that I can center Vega exactly in the center of the eyepiece. Once I've done that, then I hit Align. It'll say yes, so say yes. And then it'll show you an alignment one point on the lower right. So now you have one alignment star that so the mount knows exactly where it is in the sky. Now we want to put in uh, three more points to get an accurate fix of where the sky is. You can put more points in, um, but four will get you pretty accurate. So to put another star in, you go back to chart mode. Click chart, uh, back to objects, go down to star. Um, we'll, we'll pick another star on the same side of the sky, so select Altair. 
and hit go to. Okay, now we look through the eyepiece, see if Altair is centered. If, if it's in the eyepiece, it probably won't be exactly centered because we only have one data point. So we center it again by pushing the deck and RA motors. Okay, and then push a line. It'll say yes, no, push yes. Now we have alignment two points. And repeat that for the next two stars. And that'll give you a good alignment on the sky. All right, once you've done that, we're done aligning the telescope. Now we want to actually find something. So we'll go to uh, chart mode again. Click object just like you did before. And we'll just select a Messier, which is the first uh, on the list here. And let's see what we've got here. We'll, we'll go ahead and select, uh, how about M33? Um, which is a galaxy, just uh, in Triangulum, which is just uh, below uh, Pegasus. And so I click OK, and it'll show where it's going to end up in this, on the screen. It won't be there yet. You'll have to push Go To for it to actually go to M33. Okay, and you can watch it as the screen moves as it's moving the telescope. And you'll hear the starbook will make a small sound, a bing sound, when it gets to the object. Um, now, that's all you have to do to, to find objects. But if you want to explore around, if you don't know what to look for, you can zoom out on your screen, and you'll see little blue ovals, which are galaxies, um, little plus signs or stars. You have rings, which are uh, nebulas, like planetary nebulas. So to actually go to one of those, uh, go into chart mode again. And just move the crosshairs by using the RA and deck buttons. It won't actually move the telescope until you push go to. So you can move the crosshairs until something you want to see. So I'm going to move it over here to M31, which is nearby. And uh, if I want to be accurate at pointing it to it, I just zoom in by pushing the zoom in button. Move the uh, crosshairs, and we'll center up M31. And I hit uh, go to again. and the scope will go right to it. Then you just uh, use your eyepieces, you focus here. Um, you want to make the stars as pinpoint as you can. It's harder to focus on the actual galaxy because they tend to be diffuse and fuzzy. So that concludes our SXD and Sphinx mount training. If you have further questions or you need uh, accessories for uh, this or any other telescope, just go to seansastronomyshop.com and you'll find our contact information there. Thank you.